Okay, so let me start. Uh, actually, I started this before, and then I got interrupted. I got a call, and I don't know how to handle it. So I said that, um, what I said when I started before, we're, I'm pleased to announce that Jakob Cronenberg, who's, uh, I think, the he's a brilliant guy, and he's an author of books on astrology, and he's agreed to uh, make some lectures or some, some presentations, some lessons uh, for our, uh, our WhatsApp group. So I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, he's right now he's recovering from pneumonia, but he's still I still learn with him every day. So he's getting getting himself back together again. And uh, when he's ready, uh, we're hopefully we'll we'll figure out a way to get him on the air. Now, last week, uh, I want to talk about a few things that I mentioned. Uh, one is that uh, very briefly, I'm going to mention it because it's going to be coming up. Something about the life, the shvach, but they call the shvach of the Ari. Because so much of what we're able to do is only because of the fact that we have the Ari. The Ari is able to bring things down in such a way that Rabbeinu Kodesh can use it for the purpose of disseminating uh, cures and fixing for us to be able to make ourselves more holy. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's shrouded a little bit of mystery. So we're going to try to bring out who was the Ari, you know, what kind of man, what was the circumstance of his life. I like to talk about it. But before I get into that, I want to solve a little bit of a problem uh, that uh, is created like this. So we have this concept of these four universes. Now, let's just say the word universes, of which is Atzilus, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. Asiya is like us. Now, each one of them has a, uh, a, a, an Atzilus, a Bria, a Yitzira, and an Asiya within it. And then on and on, on and on, on and on. So ultimately, the Itzilus of Itzilus, so they call it the Abiyah, they call it also known as Abiyah, the, which is just the abbreviation of those four different ol Olamos, those four different universes. Uh, there is an Itzilus of Itzilus, and there's a Bri of Itzilus, and there's a uh, Yitzir of Itzilus, and like that. It's like that on and on and on and on. So you get to the point where you're at ultimately the highest level. And we talked about Itzilus, and we said there's 10 spheros in each one of these olamos, and they work in the form of what is called a partsof, which is three lines, the lines of my right side, and the lines of my left side, and the lines of my middle. So why did I say of me? Because the Uri tells us, and I mentioned it before when I finished the thought, he tells us there's two ways that we can understand God. Me besare echeza aloka. So for my frail flesh, my own body, I can understand the spiritual universe. He said that we can do that. So that if we look at ourselves and we realize we have a right side, a right, right brain, right arm, right leg, same thing on the left, and in the middle, you have a middle brain, and it just goes all the way down. Now, the Tikkun elevator is a place in the middle. Okay, That's, that's the metaphor for that, that place in the middle. Now, I had said that if you looked at any universe, so let's take uh, uh, the word Itzilus. And in the concept of Itzilus, remember I said that there's an Itzilus in every universe. And there's a Itzilus of an Itzilus of an Itzilus in every universe, on and on. But let's take the Itzilus, the ultimate Itzilus uh, uh, of the ultimate uh, the Itzilus again. It's a concept of distancing. distancing. As what I had been saying was, that if you had total oneness, there's nothing else, only one. There's no two-ness, there's no second part. The only way you could have a separate part is by creating a concept of something which is distant from the first part. This is a part of creation, this is the very beginning of creation. But silus means that spiritual dimension that's near to total oneness, but it's not. It's close to it. Again, you have to reason backwards. Atzilud, being near something, means that at the same time that you're not one with it, but you're separated to some extent. Now we said that it's, it's, it's possibly, if we were able to relate to that, that we would see that uh, <laughs> it really looks like oneness, but we have no eyes that are able to look at that way. So the re, the re gave us a way to try to focus this. And that's what we call this looking at our bodies, by our bodies, at the way that our body, which is a head, it has a body itself, 
and legs, which are sitting on, go on this karka, this earth, which is down here, down at the bottom. And the bottom, the bottom there would be called Malchus, and up at the top here would be called Kasser. Now we had said that there was an interesting phenomenon. The phenomenon is, is that the feet of any dimension is actually, if you look at the bottom of the feet and you could get down below it, you would find that it's the, actually the keter of a different dimension which has less light in it. Because what's the, what are we talking about? We're only talking about light. And later on, I, I don't want to jump ahead of Rabbi Mimram too much because some of the things that he says are in regards to light, the light waves, sound, sound waves, different kinds of things are very, very, very deep and they could help us tremendously in understanding where we're really at. So just like you have the ground here, and the ground is solid underneath it, that's the ground of the Malchus. But believe it or not, what you have here in this spiritual concept is, is that that Malchus is what I said before, is actually becomes the Kesser of a different dimension. But the next the dimension down has much less light because it has to go through this Malchus, which is thick. And the Malchus is really an absorbent. It's a cola, what we call a kolel. So here we are in the elevator kolel, right? So we're in the place where all these things was a kolel. Kol is a pool, a place where everything pools. So everything that's up above, all the light that comes from the ants of Baruch Hu, has to pool through all of the spheros. It has to filter down through all the spheros. So it gets, and it is, there's a diminution of this life of nothingness. The light is nothing. The light is the light of pure, pure, pure unphysicality. That's such quite a phrase. So it eventually gets down to the bottom. And the bottom is something solid, sort of speak, relative to the top. And it has much less light, but it has elements of all the light in it. And that becomes the Malchus. But then, if you flip it the other way, that diminished light that is pooled in that Malchus becomes the Kesser of the next dimension, the lower dimension. Now, well, we could go in, and I would like to say this. This is that there's two ways of looking at this. So we could look at ourselves as the whole parts of. We are the whole thing. We are all ten spheros. Look at your body. That's There's the ten spheros there. And they really go in and he'll show you the spirituality of every single part of the 248 parts of your body. It'll just show you all of these things. And each one of them is bathed in glory and light and the most wonderful possible things. But let's, that's what I came to talk about right now. So I want to talk about is a con this concept that we have like this. We have Kesser, Chachma, Bina. And then we go down all the way down to Mount because we count 10. But then in other places, we see that the Uri is continuously talking not like that. He doesn't count the Kesser. Instead, he counts something called Das. And there's place, places to say that if you look on the outside, that Das is called, they say, like the outer part of Kesser or something like that. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really go together. So in the language of the, uh, of the Uri, so we call this Chabad Chagad Nai. Now what's Chabad Chagad Nai? Chabad is Chachma Bina Das. Then it goes chesed, which is like this. Chachma, bina, das is like a triangular formation between the two in the middle. Let's say maybe like right here in my neck. And then you have chesed on your right arm, right shoulder, and there's different joints to it. And then you have gavur on the left side. And then you have the body, the whole body here. But just really the main component of the body is the middle line, which is your spine, let's say, or whatever the middle line of your body would be. And that's called teferis. Then you go to your legs. You have a netzach, that's your right leg, a chod, that's your left leg. And you have a yisod, which is your reproductive area, which is also a pool, because you see, like, the waste comes through there. And so also pools all of the mochin, that is the brain matter that's going to generate seeds. So that's in this place. So this is called Chabad Chagat Nai, okay? Or sometimes Nahim, because below, in some way, it's a little bit hard, hard to find. There's a malchus down there, too. So Malchus down there. Now, why did I... So let's go through the acrostic of these names. I don't know if I'm using the right word. It says that you have Kesser Chochmabina. Kesser Chochmabina is called Kachav. And then you go to the Guf, and you have Chagat. Again, same thing. Chesed Gabor Teferis. Netzachod Yisod. That's your body. So that would be Kachav Chagat Nai. 
But usually we don't use those words. We use the word Chabad Chagad Nai. That refers to Chachma. So what it actually is, is that what does the parts of really look like? And this goes along with what I was trying to say before about the Malchus switching into a Kesser in a lower dimension. Because Kesser doesn't really belong in the dimension, let's say the dimension I live in or you live in. It doesn't belong in that dimension. It's a dimension, it comes from a different dimension, a dimension that's not visible in this world unless you have tremendous tools to be able to use it. That's why we use it, the language that we use it. The language is a, tr- is a tool for that. So that's, that's the reason why we say Chabad Chagad Nai. And there's a phrase that Rabbi brings a lot. He has different kinds of phrases, but he says, Kulo B'chachma uh, Asisa. Everything is made out of Chachma because the first place in the parts of where light actually is visible, let's say in the light of, uh, of where we can understand a little bit of this, is in the parts of, of Atzilus, in the Chachma, which is the right brain. From the right brain, it goes to the left brain. And from then there's a pool in between or in the neck, so it's called Das. And then it moves from the right side, down the right side, down the left side, down the middle. All of this light moving like that into the next dimension. It goes into the next dimension and the next dimension and the next dimension. Also, that's why we have a Chabad Chagad Nai, that's what we call about Chabad. These are the Chabad mix, right? That's their word, Chabad. Why didn't it say Kachav? Why does it include Kesser? Kesser is really not a part of the dimension. It's a crown that fits on top of the Chochma Bina, which is the right brain, left brain. It fits on top of it. And what is it doing? It's feeding it. But it's coming from a different dimension. You may have to listen to this year again in order to be able to really appreciate uh, what we're, I'm trying to say. Maybe give me some ideas if there's some helpful thoughts uh, of what you're doing. But we are always fed by something that's higher than us. And the last thing I wanted to say is another, it's a difficult idea for a lot of people. See, so normally the way that I said it and the way that we look at ourselves as we look at ourselves from the top to the bottom. That's called orech, in length. You can look at it in length. But there's another way to look at it. It's the array that the Torah, the way that the Torah's Chacham says that everything should be looked at. And this is called ovi. I know if I mentioned this before, I talked about this before. Ovi in the yeshiva of the world, and the, they call it oivi. But oivi means thickness. So ovi means thickness. So instead of looking at it, at the partsufim as one on top of the other, we look at them more like the onion model, where everyone is on side of each other. So in other words, you have a partsuf that looks like me, only you can't see it because it's on a wavelength and that's impossible to be able to locate it, but it is generating a tremendous amount of energy. And let's say, like I say, it says it doesn't, God forbid that we should say that it actually looks like a person, but it does have a Rosh Tok Sof. It does have a head and a body and a goof. It has all these different 248 parts, which we can't really understand, but they re brings it to us. We can't really understand them because they're, they're not physical, but they are energy sources. And they are moving their, which we call the Ha'ara, a glow from them or a shining from them, let's say a radiance from them, to another parts of which looks the same, only more physical to as he, it moves to, actually we say, to the left. Because the right is usually more, we reserve those words for panemius and left is going to be what called panemius or, or inside, the inside, the closer to the source. And kitsonius would be the left, it would be more on the left side. So anyway, I just want to bring out those ideas. These are different kinds of ideas way far out uh, that we could talk about. Uh, we're going to fit them into our story because remember, the, the, the crux of the story is how do you find the Shekhinah that's inside of you? That's the crux of the story of Rabbi Yerukhaydish. And as we go to the next lesson, which I hope to be able to do, like I say, I'm running around, so I'm going to run right out of here and drive up to Boca Raton. Uh, sooner or later, I hope to be, you know, to be living there. Uh, at any rate, uh, we'll begin our story again. 
with the search because there has to be actual tools that Rabbeinu Kodesh wants to give us and Rav Shik wants to make easy for us to be able to see of how it is that we're going to find our neshamas, where we're going to find the shkina that's that is within inside of us. Thanks for listening. And there's one last thing that I want to conclude. That the main thing of all things is to enjoy. Life is here. Kodesh Baruch Hu wants only for us to enjoy. Let's hope that we can do that. The main thing, enjoy.